Well, I've spent a lot of time in my life traveling around the world and lived in some spectacular places, but I always seem to come back to the prairie like a salmon comes back to where it was born in a particular stream after traveling thousands of miles around the ocean. In fact, I was born in this little farm just a mile away right over here, and I find it interesting that this happened to be that this thousand acre prairie called Touch the Sky Prairie National Wildlife Refuge happens to have a life of its own, and it's kind of based upon passion, some amount of luck, and uh, a mood right now amongst the public that we want to start reclaiming some of the land that we've plowed and turned into cropland to put some of it back into the native landscape that was here for 10,000 years. The reason this particular prairie is significant is it was never plowed because of boulders like this. It's quite impractical to try to remove the boulders and you certainly can't plow around them. So we're sitting up in a fairly high rise. You can see three states from here, South Dakota, Iowa, and then of course Minnesota here. And it's quite a vista. That's why we call it Touch the Sky Prairie. A little bit of a reference to, to the indigenous people that lived here, the Native Americans that were here clearly before us. There's lots of evidence here on the prairie. Just yesterday, coincidentally, amazing coincidence, that I was stumbling along this hilltop here on Touch of Sky and I came across something that I would call a dolmen. It's a fairly common thing in Europe where a huge boulder was slid and structured in a way for worship, for spiritual reasons, as a landmark. I tend to think it's probably for spiritual reasons, but it's clearly to me, man-made. I know a farmer didn't do it in his pastime. It's, uh, I think that it was probably done by Native Americans for some kind of significance, and it seems like it's almost a little altar right here. But you can see this rock is balancing on a pedestal that the glaciers could have never structured like this, and certainly there was no water flowing up this high. So just yesterday, this needs to be investigated and studied. But in my mind, it's a classic dolmen. And nobody really knows what dolmens were for, or like Stonehenge. We know there was some kind of a major ritualistic happening or spiritual reason, but uh, it's pure conjecture, except to me it's clear it was made by the hand of man. The circumstances were such that an official with Fish and Wildlife Service came to my gallery, the Brandenburg Gallery in Laverne, and uh, just happened to walk in and notice that there was a prairie theme to the photographs, and he got in touch with me, and I had a vision for this particular place, which was owned by someone else at the time, a classmate, a classmate of mine. I was investigating possibly buying it just for me, just to have a prairie. And one thing led to another, and I brought a gentleman by the name of Ron Cole out from Fish and Wildlife Service. He was uh, the regional director of acquiring a series of prairies called the Northern Tall Grass Wildlife Refuge System. And it ranged from roughly the Canadian border all the way down to Iowa. And he was just getting started looking at property and looking for possibilities and he came to Laverne, went in the gallery, we met, I brought him out here and he was standing on a boulder, similar to this the day we brought him out and I hope he's not embarrassed for me saying this but he actually had tears going down his cheek. Now to see a government guy <laughs> with his uniform on with tears coming down, he looked at this and he said this is a natural. And so a partnership with the Brandenburg Prairie Foundation and the Fish and Wildlife Service, Chamber of Commerce in Laverne, who runs my gallery, the local people, generous individuals, 
We have a thousand acres of tall grass prairie with some, a lot of beautiful memories have been accumulated for me especially. So each year it gets more and more exciting. This year has got the best grass display that I've ever seen. Um, big blue stem, little blue stem, cord grass, Indian grass, the great prairie grasses that were here long before our ancestors came from Europe and plowed it up. And it's just like an island. You can see all around us is, uh, is, is lower than we are. So it, I expect the bison came up here a lot to get away from insects in the summer and it's cool in the wind. You can see where they've rubbed against the rocks and made this extremely hard Sioux quartzite shine like a mirror. Then you can see where the Native Americans would come by later and chip off some of it to use as a tool. That's quite evident all through the prairie here. I think it's probably the best place I know of in the southwest Minnesota where you can actually see evidence of Native Americans besides Jeffers petroglyphs, which are up here about 40, 50 miles with the designs that they'd carved uh, in the rock. So it's, uh, I live in the deep forest, way up on the Canadian border, that's my main home, the land of the wolf and the canoe and the deep dark forest, but I come down here and feel something that I don't feel almost anywhere else in the world. It could be the fact that I was born here and that just my landscape of my childhood and my memory, it could be the open space. It could be the unlimited sense of, you, know, you can really feel something up here. When I was a journalist, there were two subjects that just kept coming at me. One was prairie and one was wolves. One was the landscape, the most persecuted, least understood landscape in North America. The prairie was the largest expanse of an ecosystem in America. People don't think, they think that maybe it's mountains or forests or seacoast, but the prairie covered the biggest area. But it's been the most persecuted. It's been pretty much plowed up and not well understood. Most of it was destroyed and most of it disappeared before it was even really studied. They shot of the millions and millions of buffalo in these huge herds, they shot them down to and killed them down to, I think about a thousand animals or less than a thousand animals, almost became extinct. And the same thing with the prairie grasses. We don't really know, this wasn't really documented scientifically. We don't know exactly what it was like here. We kind of think we know a lot of it, but imagine there's some species that are extinct. So I was attracted to the prairie to tell the story of the prairie as a journalist, words and pictures and the wolf, the most persecuted animal in the world, I think. That's the subject I've spent my life. My first National Geographic story was prairie, tall grass prairie. Uh, I've done wolf stories for National Geographic, um, movies. I've had a lucky life. I've had a magic carpet ride. I've had so much that I actually can't quite absorb it and I think it's too much. I need to humble, become a little more humble and settle down a little more and I'm very intrigued by spending more time here on the prairie back where I came from. It, I feel a little more grounded here. What I love about Touch the Skies, history and evolution is the coming together with groups that we tend to think don't work together well. And it really thrills me, besides the obvious, the nature. That's the obvious to me. The prairie grasses and the wild expanse where you can go for a long walk without you know, running across a road or a sidewalk or something from a town. But to see the, the fruits of, of a bunch of people getting together with good intentions, it shows me that there's hope. teaching moment rather than boast about it. Oh, we've saved a thousand acres. Ah, 
yes, that's nice. But that the experience and the lesson that went with it and how it can be duplicated, spreading that word, you know, is, is really what interests me. Uh, leave a little behind. Leave something behind. That's what Touch the Sky is about for me. I'll be long forgotten. 100 years from now, 200 years from now, Touch the Sky will still be here. Photographs will be long forgotten. and it's, That makes me very happy. We all want to leave something behind, some kind of an example of what we believed in or felt. And if we can, and I didn't do this alone by any stretch.